what would you do with a patient on the maintenance? Because within, that's the label. Within right. eight weeks of completion of chemotherapy, you want to start a maintenance therapy. She gets the drug, but suddenly the CA125 bumps up. Good question. So how, so how do we define maintenance versus active treatment? I see in that it's, it's, all treatment. Treatment. it's all it's treatment. It's all just treatment. It's all treatment. These but patients I'm, all have cancer. Brad, They're all doing exactly. Brad, okay, believe me. Why don't but, we talk about when the decision is yeah. actually being made, yeah. right? Patient has platinum sensitive recurrent disease, high grade zeros. What's your, what is your, is your decision taxol carbo bev because it extends overall survival? Or do we go some non uh, yes. bev containing compound and then give them a, a, a I, treatment or uh, I, I think we get too many variables. And, and, and I know it's a cop out, but I, I, I do all of those. So in a platinum sensitive second line relapse, Sometimes I'll give her chemo alone, mm -hmm. not very often. Sometimes I'll give her carboplatin, paclitaxel, bev. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll even give her triplet with bev and then switch maintenance to rapid because I can always give her bev later. Okay, so, but, but, but you but can't do that all in the same patient. So no. you gotta talk about what you're gonna but, do. But with, there's too but many you, different variables. No, but you can, but you can tailor so treatments. And I brand? think we have, no, you no, don't. I be, I, it's called individualization. It's a, Molecular Brand. stratification, I think, <laughs> at some point. I'm just kidding. Yeah. I think if Go you ahead. have a BRCA mutation carrier or an HRD score high, uh, then you prioritize, prioritize the Okay, treatments. so now he's getting back to doing the testing. Well, he told us that was the first thing I talked about. At is how do you testing. figure out how to treat recurrent ovarian cancer? And we agreed. It's helpful. Number of lines of th therapy, time from last platinum, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. molecular signature and histologic subtype and individualization of the existing toxicities. Yes, perfect. So that's still relevant here. And I, I got too many cells mm -hmm. to say that's my go-to regimen. Absolutely, and I would agree with you. I, and I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate because I, I want to flush out this stuff because I think most clinicians are sitting in front of the data and they're sitting in front of a patient and they want to be doing the right thing, right. but they don't have the feel of freedom to do that type of individualization right. as you mentioned. So what's but these, next? But these tests, you know, somatic-based tests, they're not necessarily covered. So, you know, we're advocating something that may be difficult to I realize understand. in the practice. And I think um, we have to, as a, as a clinician, as a research clinician, start generating data that link these molecular uh, findings to outcome. Mm -hmm. Because we it's have true. to deliver in that way. We right. can't just propose, you know, we have to do these tests. We have to demonstrate that there are clinical implications. Otherwise, right. we won't get broad coverage. Well, we still have a lot of people not even doing a low-hanging fruit of Yeah, the germ one, right? So, so we've got to start exactly. I mean, that's, yeah. that's clear. True. So, yeah. so the NOVA trial was a maintenance trial within mm. eight weeks of response to platinum. I get it. Um, we're lucky that, you know, we run basically almost all of these trials. Yeah. Not everyone, but a lot of them. Mm -hmm. One of the trials with norapirib is called Quatra. The idea to make it a treatment sort of opportunity. Tell us about the Quatra trial, because again, I have the PI right here. <laughs> so, so the Quatra trial is a single arm, open label, uh, um, phase two of norapirib. Um, initially, it was really in kind of anybody with recurrent disease um, when it first opened. And they were, of course, collecting um, patients with BRCA mutations and HRD status. Um, over time, it morphed into only um, fourth and fifth line, so it limited the number of priors, and um, now it's only enrolling to HRD high patients as we finish it out. So the eligibility is sort of tweaked over time, but in general, it's a recurrent disease, single agent kind of confirmation trial that that norapirib is, is an effective Therapy, therapy at the time of recurrence. Right, because right. we already have olaparib and recaparib as right. treatment. In that specific. And we right. want norapirib as treatment. Right. And right. the beauty of your wonderful study is it will take all comers, it'll have some HRD in there, right. it'll have some BRCA. Mm -hmm. So the first label of olaparib was just germline. Mm -hmm. The next was germline somatic recaparib. I'm hoping that with norapirib treatment quatra trial that we'll have more than germline and somatic, maybe HRD, Maybe mm -hmm. even all comers, we have to see the data. Yeah. The, the, the beauty of NOVA and SOLO2 and Aerial 3 is that the platinum sensitivity is at some level a biomarker. So and I would say that, you know, um, you know while the, the studies, the, the test to identify those patients is getting better and better, and it's complete, it's continuing. Still incomplete. It's still incomplete, because we're still seeing completely wild type patients responding to these drugs. Right. So we, got, we do have some room to go, and I think maybe we ought to just briefly say about the other um, trials that are actually looking at it in comparison to chemo. 
in the, in yeah. the multiple because period. Because that remains a question. That right? remains a question, right? And I think, I think most of us, I mean, I, I think we we'll probably agree that patients, when they're on these drugs, they like being away from chemotherapy. Right. And but so, we, we need some direct, so solo, go ahead. We solo do need some, yeah, we, we just, and so, so just briefly, these, 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 uh, these trials, uh, uh, Aerial 4 and Solo 3, are really kind of set up to try to look at this against plat, um, um, chemotherapy, uh, you know, non-platinums and platinums in, in Aerial 4. But it just, but the, con the idea is to have some context. Uh, solo so 3 is a lapra versus four choices of chemotherapy, right. BRCA mutated, it's interesting, none of it's platinum. Right, right, no, then, no platinum. And then aerial right. four, same, but they, if it's more than 12 months, it puts platinum in it because that's really a fair comparison. Yeah, I mean, it just gives us yeah. an opportunity. And but we I, have 004, so through the right. NCI, we have we have a platinum sensitive um, trial against chemo. Olapra versus chemo. Yes. And a platinum resistant. With Olaparib and Olaparib Sidirinib. Right. right. So that's so, also versus, thank you for that. Yeah. Right, so right. I think those, we'll sort I'm glad that you, out. yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm glad you brought that up because I think that's the next thing we have to know because we have maintenance indication and we have treatment indication. And so now we have to figure out, are you going to use PARPs again? We'll probably talk about that. If not, what's your best place to put them? Like what's the best time exactly. to use it? The sequencing maintenance piece, yeah. or treatment? Mm -hmm. yeah. So we have to know treatment versus what we would do otherwise right. before we can compare it to right. the maintenance. We don't have that yeah. information. The good news is, is that now this, the, the, the field is, help, is, helpfully, is being developed so that we can actually make some of these yeah. decisions. Well, thanks to all of your hard work and for yeah. the wonderful patients and, and caregivers mm -hmm. that, that, allow their, you know, that, that, that allow these studies to happen.